So, G4 is officially over, and I feel like I want to talk about it. Let's go. What's going on, you guys? Gaming out here coming at you for another video. Today, we're going to be talking about G4. They are, have officially closed down. You know, there's a lot of stuff that's going around. You know, I think everyone knows this was going to happen eventually. No one is surprised on this. I think <laughs> I think we can all agree on that. Uh, first thing I want to say is I hate for the people that lost their job. I know finding a job in this kind of climate is, is rough. And, you know, I hope that everybody that was affected by these layoffs you know, end up somewhere that's going to accommodate to their needs and, you know, maybe even make a little bit more money from G4. But when it comes to G4 itself, I feel like there's a lot of issues. Now, I know people like to blame Frost. They love to blame Frost. And I'm not going to say that individual helped or didn't help then the actual scenario that G4 was in. But I don't feel like it was entirely her. I feel like there's a lot of issues G4 came into coming out the gate. First off, think they were a little bit too ambitious you know you come up with that many i think it said there was 200 staff now clearly most likely there wasn't nearly that many when they first came out but keep in mind g4 was only relaunched for like a year i think it's coming close to a year so to me it's just like why did you have that many people keep in mind as well is i actually was told that they had a cable provider they was on a cable provider something with uh, comcast now i don't know exactly what it goes into doing that but i know that's not cheap you know maybe that's something else that was going on but cap not capcom comcast is one of the people that funded it and i think they own the actual thing but let's let's read a little bit what it says as far as what comcast said of the matter so here's scott's full memo which deadlines the obtained from a source Team, as you know, G4 was relaunched last year to tap into the popularity of gaming. We invested to create the new G4 as an online and TV destination for fans. To be entertained, be inspired, and connect with gaming content. Over the past several months, we have worked hard to generate that interest in G4, but viewership is low, and the network has not achieved sustainable financial results. This is certainly not what we hope for, and as a result, we have made the decision to uh, to discontinue G4 operations effective immediately. I know this is disappointing news, and I'm disappointed too. I wanted to thank I wanted to thank you and everyone on the G4 team for the hard work and commitment to the network. Our human resources team is reaching out to you to provide you with the support, discussed other opportunities that may be available, and answer any questions you may have. Thank you again for all you have your hard work for g4 sincerely david scott chairman and ceo comcast specter okay so pretty much what's going on here is this thing didn't make money it just did and sooner or later people are going to cut their costs if it's not making money i personally feel like it's a little jacked up you tell people in this fashion clearly this is an email sent out to the team of g4 so they found out pretty much the same time we found out i think that's jacked up we need to be more, way more sensitive to this kind of stuff. I feel like people get canceled for silly reasons sometimes when it's corporations like this doing way more harm by, you know, firing people with no time to find any other form of income. And I think that's wrong on multiple occasions. I do think it's interesting that he said we're trying to generate interest in G4. I'm kind of curious what they did to try to to try to generate interest at G4. It's, I, it's who who knows that it was on you know Comcast Network. I didn't know that, so that's probably right there cost a lot of money. Now since Comcast owned it, maybe it was a little bit more financially beneficial to host it on their own networks, considering they owned it. But I'm sure it wasn't cheap. What I feel like G4 should have did is they should have came back as a small entity, a YouTube channel, maybe a Twitch channel, and then they should have built up 
get a show, build that show up. You know, they probably would have to launch with multiple shows, but not nearly as much as they did. And then what they do is they slowly build up to that staff. They find out what kind of audience they wanted. I feel like they try to come back here with the exact same mentality that last G4 had. And guess what? Last G4 is not here. So why did you think that was going to work out? You know, and especially when it comes to the content creators and influencers that they've reached out to. You know, I'm not saying nothing bad about those people, but when I've watched an actual show on YouTube when it was related to G4, I never really felt chemistry behind everyone. For some reason, I felt like they just looked at every corner of the internet, found someone with reasonable following. You know, an influencer has enough following to bring those people to this network, to this YouTube channel. And then they're all like, okay, we got to get some more people. Let's fill out some of these shoes. And then that's all they did. But, you know, the problem is, is people could have as much followers as they want. But the biggest question that you have is the content going to result to the people that you are trying to get? For instance, Frost, uh, to my knowledge, he came from, you know, uh, the, the esports scenario. So they're more into, you know, competitive scene of everything. That's the following that she got. How is her following going to result in anything in here? And it's just, I think stuff like that, I do feel like some of the influencers didn't really know what they were talking about when it comes to gaming. Not all of them. Some of them are very, uh, you know, informative, but it's just like, there's so much more talent out there that would have loved the opportunity that could have actually had good chemistry. That's why I said you would have built it slow. Start with a couple shows coming back on YouTube, build that to something, find out the audience that you're bringing in and what they actually like to watch, then restructure to something else that they actually want to watch to, then build another show around what that is, find out what people like in that area, then restructure with that input. And I don't think they did that, you know, it's a tragedy that G4 lost all those jobs over something that they just rushed into. And I'm not saying they didn't spend time. I'm sure they spent a lot of time building G4, but it just feels like they didn't do enough. They didn't do enough research. They tried to go out there with just the G4 name and thought it was going to do something. A lot of people on Twitter say that G4 is an outdated concept that can never actually be done again. I disagree. I feel like you get the right influences in there, the right chemistry in there. You do it in a decent budget and grow it depending on how much the actual channel grows. Could have easily done something like G4. We see right now, kind of funny. You know, there's a lot of other networks doing exactly what G4 tried to do and they're being successful at it. So you can't really tell me that. It's just this particular company didn't really try to do it the right way. They try to brute force followers to get an audience and clearly you see it didn't work. And obviously Frost didn't help the situation. She went out there and she made a lot of acquisitions and she made a lot of statements that people didn't resonate with. And she said, if you don't like what she's saying, don't watch. A lot of people took her seriously and they didn't watch. But at the end of the day, I feel like G4 was going down from multiple scenarios and not just Frost. That's pretty much all I got to say about this. I, I It sucks that G4 went down. It's like I said, I feel like they only had themselves to blame as far as like the upper management and the people that was maybe at Comcast that was actually pulling the strings. Because to me, you, could, you have 200 employees almost out the gate because they've only been around for not even a year. So it's just like, why did Comcast feel like they needed to push that much product? You could have did it way less if you had less shows and you had people actually knew what they were doing. And it's like, you know, I hope everyone gets everything they need. But to me, you know, this could have been done way differently. Now, obviously, I'm only speaking from a perspective of someone that's been in the industry for a few years. I have ran podcasts, you know, the Iron Lords podcast. I know a little bit when it comes to, you know, forming content. Am I the greatest at it? No. But when I'm looking at G4 and I feel like none of them really interact with each other the way good chemistry is, I feel like that had a lot to do with why G4 went down because when the content's not there, slowly and surely the actual channel's gonna go. But that's just my opinion. Like I said, I don't know everything that went on in G4. Hopefully there will be a little bit more information comes out in the next couple months, probably years most likely because of NDAs and stuff that we'll get a little bit more of information on what happened to G4. But anyway, that's all we have for you guys today. This is it, Gaming Act, I'm out of here. Peace.